hello, hello. Welcome back. Episode 122. Crazy effing mommy. I'm Elise DeLucci. I'm your host. We're in my living room on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York City, baby. I hope you can hear me okay. I had a little change to my equipment in this dude, okay? So I I can't really like hear myself, if that makes sense. Like I can hear myself, but I can't hear myself. Like I don't even know why I have headphones on right now, basically. Usually when I have the headphones on, I, it feels like I have headphones on, but I could like hear my voice in my ears. Right now, it feels like, I don't know. It fe- feels like nothing. Like I don't, I, did you hear that? I, You know what? We're just going to go for it. We're just going for it, people. Like, I feel like my mic isn't working. Like, you want you want to know what? You want to know what? Let me tell you something, people, okay? It's probably my kids. Does that make a difference? Okay, maybe that made a difference. All I know is that these kids think that this equipment is a freaking Jimboree jungle gym. I can't take it! Fact of the day, the stinkiest fruit, yes, the stinkiest fruit is a Dorian fruit native to Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. It looks like a cross between a honeydew, a melon, no, a honeydew, a cantaloupe, and like a spaghetti squash. And you cut into it. Get ready. Smells like stinking socks. Swear to God. Like rotten eggs. I don't know. I don't know why these people think that this sounds delicious, smells delicious, but apparently it does. The only reason why I know about it is because Paul, you know, my ex, he lived in, um, where did he live? He lived in Australia. I think he lived in China too for a bit. And uh, he knew about the fruit. I never tried it, but if you want to try it, you could just go down to your local Chinatown or whatever Asian supermarket and you could buy one. I've never, I've never tried one, but the reason why I'm all hopped up, I'm all hopped up on fruit. Remember like thousand episodes ago, I had the sumo orange. I was at my mother's house in Naples, Florida, her condo. And, and I got the sumo orange. I had like, I don't need 30 DMs from girls being like, oh my God, I tried the sumo orange. Best orange in my life. I, I swear. I, I'm not, I am not telling you to try a Dorian melon. Okay. Cause th- this is, this is the, that there's nothing delicious. The reason why I'm hopped up on fruit is because I bought myself the other day or me and the girls. Wait, you'll die. A horned melon. Horned melon. Let me try to say it in regular. A horned melon. Oh my God. Like I'm looking at my, let me, let me look at myself. Me. A horned melon. When I say horned, when I try to pronounce the E-R-N. I, I look like a, doing a Ronald McDonald. The horned melon. The horn. So I just, it's a horned melon. Okay. It, I pronounce it horned. A horned melon native to Africa, Australia. Also on sale in New York City at Whole Foods. So I bought one. It's a little thing. It looks like the size of a mango, right? And it's yellow, a yellowy orange. And it has horns all over it. Not like devil horns, It like like spikes. It has spikes all over it. And not like an itchy ball, not like an uni, you know, like in the ocean, you know, not, not you know, the itchy balls that fall from the tree. You know what I'm talking about. No, it's just, it's like, it's like prominent horns. My, my kids saw it and thought, it had pimples and it wasn't a, you know, they're sharp, they're sharp, but I bought it, it was on sale. Never tried it before. And I said, we're going to do a taste test kitties. Okay. And we brought the horns melon to the house and we waited a couple of days. Cause I don't know what it, it, online. It's like, Oh, it's right. Right away. I'm like, all right. It's from the cucumber family. Okay. And apparently Everything I read online, it said it's going to taste a little bit banana, a little bit zucchini, a little bit cucumber, a little bit lemon. Fine. Cut into it. Oh, my God. For, it's a hot green color, like the inside of a kiwi, but like fluorescent. Okay. It's the color of Ecto Cooler. Remember Ecto Cooler? Hi, see ya. Okay. You cut into it. That's the color. And then it's littered with seeds. You can barely eat it. The, the seeds are get in the way so much. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I took a spoon and I scooped out a little bit of the fruit, the meat, the fruit meat. Ugh, it sounds disgusting. And it, it, it's all seedy. And it's literally like a hot green gel. Sometimes, oh, by, it also could be called a jelly lemon, a, a jelly melon, a jelly melon, I heard, because it's so jelly. Scoop it out. Took a little, little taste, a little nibble. Taste, not so pleasant, like a cucumber. 
like a very jellied cucumber. Like when you have a cucumber in the fridge and it's going bad, you know, obviously you just dump it. But say it didn't go bad, right? Just say it just turned almost like to mush. Imagine a mushy cucumber. That's kind of like what it tastes like. It has almost like a little bit of a refreshing taste to it. But you, there's so many seeds, you can't, it's not really edible. If I was dying on an island, I would devour a horned melon, okay? But if I have choices between cantaloupe and honeydew and sweet, sweet, beautiful mangoes, I'm not buying the horned melon. Now a durian or a horned melon, I'm in, I'm in for the horned, okay? So I got, I, I, you know, I'm all into it. And then... And then, you know, of course, because how I am, you know, I have my phases. I was like, oh, I'm dying for a pomegranate. But I didn't want to deal with peeling the pomegranate. And then pomegranate, I love pomegranate. I absolutely, I love it. But you got to cut the pomegranate, right? And then you got to go through a maze of seeds, right? Little tiny flaps of pomegranate flesh on top of little juicy bursts of of heaven. I, I, I don't want to do that work. So anyway, I splurged on just the seeds from the produce section. It, it, Palm Wonderful. You know, that's the one that does the juice. And um, they make the, that's the company that make, makes the juice, but they also have just the seeds. And I bought, you know, and they were so expensive. I think I paid like $5 for a little tiny thing of seeds, like, like, like a cup of seeds. I mean, I get it. It's a lot of work. But I had to have it. I had to have it. I had to have it. And and I, I just, I don't know. I just decided I just want to eat more fruit. I don't know. I it, this, You know what? This all probably comes because I was reading an article about Steve Jobs. Okay. That this is reading Steve Jobs. This is last week. Hold on. Let me take a sip. Mm. Mm. Got the seltzer. Tastes even better because it was on sale. Oh, Schweppes lemon lime. Five ninety nine for a pack of twelve. Now wherever you are, like one girl, she emailed, uh, she messaged me this week. She's from Dallas. Hi, doll. You're probably like five ninety nine for twelve cans of seltzer in Dallas. What are you nuts? That's so expensive in Manhattan. That's cheap. Okay, that's cheap. Usually, I pay. Uh, well, I pay. I pay nothing of the sort. Usually, it's in the stores for a pack of eight cans of seltzer. They want nine ninety five. You could keep it, okay? I rather buy polar seltzer from Costco, case of twenty four for six dollars. Even though I'm not loving all the polar flavors right now, for whatever reason, like it's the lime is too much. Like, why don't they do a lemon? They have a lime and a lemon in the case of twenty four. Just put them together and then get another flavor in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, but when I see Schweppes lemon lime on sale, oh my god, the gates of heaven open. <laughs> No coffee today, just the seltzer. So I'm reading the article about Steve Jobs and he was, if you didn't know, probably the most famous fruitarian, fruitarian. Yeah, fruit, uh, the fruitarian. This is somebody that only eats a fruit diet, right? And and like a lot of type A serial entrepreneurs, everybody's very extreme. Everybody takes things to extreme because you got, you know, you got to be a little obsessive. But he took his diet to the extreme, Steve Jobs. And uh, he would talk about it sometimes at conferences. I never heard him talk in person uh, myself. But if you Google it, he'll talk about it. And he said he's never felt as creative. He's never felt more creative than when he was just eating fruit, right? He, in fact, hello, hi. The reason why Apple is Apple is because of his extreme fruitarianism. How about that for the fact of the day? Did you know that? Do you know why Apple is Apple? Yeah. Did you know why Apple, that little tiny logo, remember in the 80s and 90s when we're playing Oregon Trail and dying of scarlet fever and trying to get more oxen to pull our wagon and you got that little apple staring you in the face, the multiple, the multiple, the the the, uh, the horizontal rainbow colored apple. Did you ever wonder why the computer was called Macintosh Apple? It's because Steve Jobs was a fruitarian. King of the fruit. Anyway. He found apples, Steve Jobs, fun and spirited, and he found it to be a not intimidating fruit. You know, he's been a little nuts. He needed a little nuts and genius, right? And um, and he would notoriously eat apples and carrots a week at a time. So anyway, that's why he named it apple. But he is this this uh, fruit. He was a fruitarian, and he is says by the way, by the by, 
He says, sometimes I'd go around with an orange glow because I would just eat carrots for a week. All right. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like you're nuts. But that, that, that's fine. Who, who, who am I to judge? Who am I? But of course, in true Elise Delucci fashion, I'm like, oh, I'm doing fruit for a week. I don't even know why I bother. I don't know why I bother. I don't know. I'm, I'm never going to lose 10 pounds. I mean, you know, never say never. But I, I just know I'm never going to lose. <laughs> it's like my mother. Post a video about her, by the way, the other day. I don't know if you saw it. Her blessing the saint statue because she thinks blessing her dollar store saint statues is going to get her into the pearly gates. Whatever, ma. And um, she says to me, which I was surprised. She never comments on my videos. Never. You know, like never on the phone. Like it's like it's it's like the elephants in the room. It's like she knows I do it. She's mortified. She doesn't say anything. But this time she said something and she was like, oh, excuse me. You think you could have posted that video after I lost 10 pounds? And I just said, ha ha. But I wanted to say, you not lose 10 pounds. You've been trying to lose 10 pounds since 1983, ma. And I, I, I when I say I'm going to lose 10 pounds, I hear her voice in my head. That's what happens. But of course, I told myself I'm going to go on a diet, a fruit diet, just like Steve Jobs. Not thinking about that fruit has all the sugar in the world. But I read the pomegranate reduces anxiety and stress. And I was like, that's it. Buckle up, baby. We're doing fruit for a week. Let me tell you when I got off the fruit train. When I bought a, a, a persimmon, a pers persimmon, right? Per Let's be classy up here. This is, this is my, when I bought a persimmon, that sounds awful. That's how I used to talk at work. When I bought a persimmon, I'm going to go out for my lunch and buy a persimmon. Yeah, okay. And then happy hour, Elise, would be like, so I bought a persimmon. <laughs> no, but my fruit diet came to a screeching halt when I bought a persimmon, okay? Because, because you have to do this. You actually have to try this. So I like persimmons. They're very Italian, of course. My mother loves persimmons. And sometimes my mom would eat a persimmon hard, like, like take like a, get that crunch in there. You know, I, I feel like I, I see, I have a vision. Ma, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I have a vision of you leaning over the counter, over the sink and just biting into a persimmon, a good old crunch, like a crunchy apple, kind of like how we talked about the Asian pears, right? The, I mean, the, yeah, the Asian pears that they're called apple pears. It's probably because they're called apple pears because it's a, a pear and a pear with the crunch. So I, I I buy the persimmon, right? And I, I take a bite and oh my God, I had a life altering experience. Do yourself a favor, go to the supermarket, buy a hard persimmon, cut it in half, take it home. Just take a bite out of it. You're going to die. You let, It feels like, it, 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 I actually think biting into an unripe persimmon is what death feels like. I bought, the, I mean, I bit into it and all of a sudden, all the saliva out of my mouth was like violently sucked out of my mouth. My mouth became extremely chalky in an instant. And I, my, my whole mouth started to pucker up. I'm not even like a dramatic type of cat. You're probably like, yeah, you are. I know you. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. I'm, I, I swear to God, I'm not. I don't, I, 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 I never, I'm never saying, I'm, oh, I'm sick with this. When do you hear me saying, oh, my back is hurting. I got a bad knee. It never, except when I, you know, need an excuse to not exercise. That's besides the point. But I bit in to the unripe persimmon and my mouth, it just puckered. It got dry. It got chalky. It was like the worst cotton mouth. It was like, if you want to torture somebody, just give them an unripe persimmon, shut the lights off, lock the door and say, have fun with your life. You know what I Like it, it was horrible. So I immediately text my mother and I'm like, what did you eat? And she's persimmons raw, you know, unripe. And she, I didn't even, she's like, yeah, sometimes I do it. It's like, what are you, a masochist? Why would you do that? Apparently you're supposed to wait until they're like super soft and then you could take the bite. And it's like biting into a soft fruit. And you know, you can eat the skin of a persimmon, but I don't buy persimmons on the regular. So like, I forgot, okay. Never again. And by the way, why why do you have that dry, furry mouth feeling when you when this happens? It's because there's a lot of tannins in the fruit, in the unripe fruit, and tannins are astringent, you know, like witch, witch hazel or face toner. And so when you take a bite, 
You feel like your mouth is one step from death. This is definitely what dying feels like, an unripe persimmon. Okay, that's all I'm going to say to you. So, uh, Natch, I stopped the fruit diet. I was on the fruit diet for, uh, oh, mm, <clears throat> 24 hours. But anyway, <sighs> back to finding another plant. <laughs> mm. I am um, trying to find some new places to online shop, like for clothes, because I can't stand anything at, at, at these days. And so I, I tried to try, I, I try, I tried ordering from some of the young, the young stores, like as if like I'm ancient, but there's these, you know, online stores, lulus.com, uh, pretty little things. I think it's .com. And um, another brand that keeps popping up for me, uh, Judith March, another brand, not cheap though. That brand's not cheap. Lulu's is like mid, mid price. Lulu's is like gap prices and pretty little things is like, um, what do you call it? Shein. That's what you call it, right? Shein. I, I have a couple of things from Shein. I bought it a couple of years ago. You know, that stuff is so cheap. You, but you can only get like a few good wears and then it's done. Then it falls apart at the seams. But I have a couple of things. Skirts. <clears throat> I love like a mini skirt. That's my look. I've been wearing mini skirts since seventh grade. With with thick tights and a black turtleneck, that's how that that's my look. And um, so I I, I ordered a couple of things from Pretty Little Things Lulu's. I'll let you know. I don't know. You know, I hope I hope they don't come, and it looks totally unlike the picture. You know, because I that happened with Fashion Nova a few years ago. You know, when all the Nova they were doing their big Nova Girls campaign, they basically hired everybody that looked like Kim Kardashian, fooling us all. And then we all ran out and buy their two, bought their two dollar clothes only for it to arrive, and it looks like. I don't, it's like a G string. Like it didn't, it didn't even fit. Like wh- wh- who's sizing fashion Nova, please. So I- I'll let you know, but I got to say, I went on the Zara website because I have, obviously we have that. Well, not obviously. There's still a couple of Zara's still in business and open the brick and mortar stores. Cause you know, everything's closed. Everything closes down in the city. Retail can't survive. And um, there, the Zara website is just, it's pitiful. I don't know what you effing doing. I mean, what I think they're from Spain. Your e-commerce platform, it's just horrible. Can you do something about it? Like all the, it's like they're just trying to be different. Go on Zara. And if you Google, you know, I mean, if you search on their website, you use their search in the navigation bar and you know, you're like, oh, I, I want a pink mini skirt. You know, it'll come, things will come up. But it's this vertical, uh, you know, almost like an ever scroll with giant pictures of the clothes. Like it's almost like an editorialized, digital version of a fashion magazine, which clearly they think that sells clothes. But uh, newsflash, people don't have time to scroll, uh, you know, through this scroll, we're scrolling for two minutes and all I'm seeing is two items of clothing because you have pictures so goddamn huge and it's going down the page. I, I don't, I can't, I can't. Like any money that I would have spent at Zara, they lost the sale due to their shitty website. Just, just, just a note. And on the clothing note, I'm also back on the hunt for, you know, my favorite nightgowns. But I felt like I needed to give you an update because I've talked about that brand, that Amazon brand, a cower, you know, it's like, I have a a E-K-O-U-E-R. Like if you type in on Amazon, soft pajamas for women or nightgowns for women, this a cower comes up all over the place. And when they are delivered, oh my God, scrumptious, they're, the, 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 it's cotton, it's modal, whatever it is. It's so nice. The colors are nice. Yeah. Fast forward five months. Okay. And it's like a bally piece of crap. Okay. I got a lavender floor length night, nightgown from this brand. I just bought it like four months ago. Under arms, under the arm, the armpit area, you know, and it's a tank top nightgown, by the way. So under the armpit area, it's all, it's dirty looking, it's discolored, it's bally, it looks like a Shonda mess. Like I, like, I'm sorry. It was $29.99, okay? And can it la- at least last for a year? Everything is just such garbage. <sighs> so my girlfriend's like, try the brand Miscellane. There's a nightgown brand, Miscellane. I think that they specialize in nightgowns that it should be only worn at the nursing home, but fine. I haven't found a decent miscellane nightgown, but the price is higher. It's like $60, $70 for a nightgown. But listen, if it lasts, 
if I buy it in a size extra large, because then it then that makes up for any room, any weight that I'll gain <laughs> or lose. You know, and if I lose, I'll just like put a stitch in it, make it smaller, let it out when I gain the weight. And and if it's sixty seven dollars and it lasts me five years, it's worth it. It becomes cheaper than this crap on Amazon. Anyway, shout out to Brett Ernst, who showed up at my sister's hair salon in Staten Island the other day. Can you die? So I'm home. And uh, sorry. You know why, by the way, you know why I have to stop and take a sip today? Because my kids, I gave them a little chore. I said, okay, mommy, the seltzer came, you know, from whatever we got it delivered. And um, I want you to take, I, I'm going to cut it out of the box and I you know, open the box, cut it, whatever. I want you to put it in the pantry for mommy. And they put it in the pantry and seltzer cans just all over the floor, upside down. So my seltzer can literally looks like it exploded, has bumps all over it. It's like the leper of Schweppes cans. I, like I can't, like, look at that. You see in this one on YouTube, if you're watching anyway, anyway. So the other day I'm in the kitchen going crazy as usual, dinner time. And um standing over the sink like a mess, you know, like no, no bra on, like side pony, like lip liner smeared over the cheek, like powder all over myself. Like, I would uh, not powder, breadcrumbs, you know, and my sisters call my phone. And I'm just like, I got like oil. I'm like, I can't. I told my girls, hey, just get the phone for mommy. I can't answer. My sister's like, I hear my sister, no, pick up the phone, pick, hey, Elise, I got to talk to you. I'm like, get the hell out of here, I'm busy. And she was calling me because she was in the chair getting her hair dyed. And who but anybody, one of my favorite comedians and friends, Brett Ernst, walked in. He plays Louis LaRusso on Cobra Kai. And I spent some time with him during the pandemic. Uh, I was out at Vegas in Vegas. He had a residency at a hotel there. And he's just so funny. He's a funny guy. I love him. and. He was, I don't know, doing something in Manhattan. Thanks for the phone call, Brett. Okay, please. And uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, he, no, but he was on, he was doing something in Manhattan and he stopped at his friend's house or his friend's business. Who He owns a flower shop in Staten Island and like upstairs is a hair salon where my sister gets her hairs on and he walked in and my sister was like, oh my God, aren't you a comedian? My sister's a comedian. You know, it was nice. It was cute. Whole place going crazy. I mean, he's he's a cute guy. You know, to be honest, Brett, what you should have done, what you should have done, okay, when you're in the hair salon in Staten Island, you should found yourself a wife. How about a girlfriend, Brett? Okay, how about that? We talked about that. We talked about that. But a, a lot of times, I think in the call when we were together, I made Brett take me to Burger King at four in the morning so I could get French fries and coffee. Okay, I like, I and we talked about everything. Okay, <laughs> that was what I wanted to do. He's like, yeah, get off stage. I had horrible sets, like the like the worst of my life because I hadn't gone on stage in like a year. You know, everything was closed, pandemic time. And uh, and we're hanging out in the casino. And I wanted, I said, after, get me. I need French fries. I need coffee. And then we talked about his love life. And I said, you got to find somebody, right? Come on. That's what you should have been doing in Staten Island. Said, you're hanging out with your boys. Flower shop. What do you need flowers for? Well, maybe you have a girlfriend. You're not telling me. Hmm. Anywho, Brad Ernst. Eligible bachelor, just putting that out there for you, ladies. Very nice. Family's in Jersey and in Florida. He lives in Vegas, though. You'd have to be open to moving to Vegas, which then you'd have to go around saying that you live in Nevada, which I don't know if that's so terrible. That's the thing. It's like Chicago, right? Like Chicago's fine. But then you remind that you live in Illinois. You know, I mean, to a New Yorker, this is like a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't want to go say I live in Illinois. I, I like to say, where do you live? New York, New York, bottom line. Where do you live? Chicago, Chicago Illinois. Now, I'm, it's like not even, I can't, I, honestly, I can't even handle it. Waterford Crystal. Waterford Crystal opened up a pop-up shop downtown New York City in Soho at the end of October. I am only finding out about this now. Sorry. And the reason why they opened up a pop-up shop is because apparently they're trying to have their crystal appeal to a younger generation. They want, they, they, they are acknowledging the executive at, well, I read this in Ad Age, by the way, um, which is a trade magazine I get um, and love. And apparently the guy, the brand's guy, I don't know, chief brand officer, whoever he is at Waterford CEO, he's like, Waterford is a grandmother's brand. 
Water, Waterford is your grandma's brand. And we want to appeal to Gen Z. We want them to feel not as intimidated to buy crystal, to use crystal, use it in your every, everyday life. Here's the thing. Did you change your crystal pattern or are you still selling the Lismore Waterford? I mean, that's that's what it really comes down to. Because the Waterford Lismore goblets have been around for the last like 90 years. I, by the way, love, I have, I have the balloon Waterford balloon goblets. I only have six. I I remember registering for 12. I only have six because I don't know, somebody didn't want to spend the, for the 12, which is fine. They were very expensive. I actually had the square version on, the square versions of the Waterford Liz, Lismore goblet. The balloon ones were probably on sale. That's probably why I got the six balloons, the round. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. But the CEO, whoever said this at Waterford is true because it's right, because I don't really use them. I used it once recently, a wine glass, uh, one of my Waterford glasses with a slice of lemon, had a little seltzer, you know, plain seltz. I I was doing the podcast, actually. I probably just didn't say it, but I was scared I was going to break it. That's the thing. I didn't want to break the stemware. Like, so I understand, but I didn't get to go to the pop-up store yet, but I did go on their website. And here's the thing. Everything is exactly the same. I don't see anything different about the, the, the this trying to uh, appeal to a younger generation. They have a Waterford Lismore in a black crystal. I really like that black crystal. Like, I feel like it's very sexy. It's very Lady Gaga. It's very Mizana, you know? But everything else, it's like, na- it's like Nanaware. And I'm sorry. Gen Z, they're not stupid. Millennials, we're not stupid. Nobody's stupid, but it's like the picture frame, you're still selling the Waterford crystal picture frame, which one, nobody wants, okay? But two, if we did want it, we're not going to buy it in your store or on your website. You know why? Because we know that we can go to a garage sale, okay, in a rich neighborhood, and we could buy it for $2. Like, change the stuff up, right? And we all know, Gen Z, they want to spend their money on experiences, They don't necessarily want to have extravagant items. So if you want somebody to spend money on your extravagant item, you better freaking make it cool. You better not like be like, oh, let me just sell the same Waterford Crystal Cross that has been on the market since 1942. Okay, I mean, like, that's the thing. That's the thing. Nobody needs a, a crystal basketball paperweight for a gift, yes. But if you're trying to get like a whole new generation to buy and use, oh, come on. Oh, my God. TV talk time. I'm on one episode left of Handmaid's Tale. And I'm so upset because I love the show. And I, it, um, it, I'm on the fifth, ep- the fifth season, which is the new season. They're only doing one more season and then it's done. I, the, 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 the cinematographer, the director of photography, I've said it before. Oh my God. They have the most beautiful shots on that show. The nature of that show. There's so much horror and terribleness of that show. They make gruesome look gorgeous. Shout out to, what's the name? I wrote it down. Colin Watkinson. He created that unique cinematography. You're only going to know what I'm talking about if you watch the show. And by the by, I'm not one of these snobby people that are like, oh my God, the cinematography was absolutely fabulous. Like I'm not like, I'm not, I don't, whatever. But when you're watching the show, there's such a, 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 there's a picture like literally, you know, there's a TV, you're watching the television and the, 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 everything is symmetrical or it's dark matched with light or the, and the colors, right? Like they, it, when they're in Gilead, which is to, supposed to be like the United States, the new United States, like at this total, totalitarian society, the colors are like the only, are like black, white, grays, green, um, and burgundies, like a, you know, like a maroons, like the, it, it's a whole thing. When it switches to another location, Canada, you see another kind of color palette, but then it's every, every you just got to watch it. Besides the fact that the topic is outrageous, like the show's subject matter, the topic. Elizabeth Moss, the star of that show, is, uh, she is, I didn't know her really before. I, I think she was like on West Wing or something, but 
Her acting is amazing. And she directed, okay, a bunch of episodes. And she, I think she has like a credit as an executive producer. Like, and guess what? She's a woman. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Okay, men. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. And the first three, by the way, episodes of the first season, I think it's the first season, first three episodes, the director of photography, shout out to that Reed Morano from Brooklyn, woman. Thank you. Thank you. Just, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And you, you absolutely have to watch it. And because I am a sucker for punishment, I then started watching Keep Sweet, you know, on, which is on Netflix, Handmaid's on Hulu. Keep Sweet about the FLDS church. Insane. Finish that. Such an easy show. Got to watch it. You got to watch four episodes. Bang it in. Bang it out. About the takedown of Warren Jeffs and those strong women. And then I had dinner with Vic, Vic DiBetetto and his wife, Lucy, who's a doll. And uh, they were telling me that there's another show I need to watch. We need, well, Chris and I need to watch one season, The Watcher on Netflix. Have you seen this? Apparently based on a true story about like a, uh, you know, like a young, cool couple from, I'm assuming Manhattan or Brooklyn or something like that. And they move out to Westfield, New Jersey. They move out to the suburbs. They bought this huge house. They spend all this money on this house, gorgeous house, like like ridiculous. And uh, and then apparently there's like some stalker or something. I'm only on the first episode, but it's good. It, it's good. I'm on it. And and then of course because the, this is what the TV does pops up last night. Chris is I don't know what he was doing. Not here. And I um oh, where was I? oh we, no we had no you know what we had dinner with somebody. That's where we were. But. I was watching TV alone late at night. And um, I'm a, I am a stalker or I'm a stalker popped up for me on Netflix. So, of course, I was like tempted. <sighs> Lots of miserable stuff on the TV. Lots of miserable subject matter. I'm a killer. I'm a stalker. It's like worst roommate ever. Keep sweet where they like do un- child bride marriages, handmaid tale. Oh, God. It's a lot of stuff. I, I haven't brought myself to watch Dahmer, though. Someone on Instagram said, I watched Dahmer and then I couldn't eat, a, I couldn't buy a pack of pork chops for like a couple weeks after. And I was like, why? That's so weird. And then I realized probably because whoever hit this guy, this psychopath hacked up, he probably like packaged them like freaking pork fillets, okay? I haven't brought myself to that because I everybody that talked about it has been talking about Dahmer, the Dahmer tapes. I think there's two like Dahmer, some like documentary thing. And I think there's a tapes one. Everybody that's been talking about that has been saying it's so scary. And like, I'm fine to watch all these scary shows because, you know, I live in an apartment. I only got one point of entry. That's why I could watch even The Watcher if I was in a house in the suburbs. And I had basement door, sliding door off the kitchen, front door, gar- two garage doors, five points of entry in the house. I would never, never want, you would never find me watching that. I would be state of panic, okay? State of panic. Iris Apfel, everybody's favorite octogenarian. Or wait, it, did she turn 100? I might be out of it. I think she might turn, no, she thinks she got famous when she was in her 80s. You know how she is, with the white hair and the, uh, the big black glasses. I love, like, if you haven't seen her documentary, I definitely have mentioned it in the past. Iris, you got to watch it. She has a line of area rugs out with the website Ruggable. They're cute. They, it just popped up for me somewhere, some ad. And they're adorable. Area rugs with, like, zebra and leopard and... um just like nice jewel tones, you know, like not nothing like so dramatic, like crazy dramatic. You'll probably see it and be like, Elise, this is fucking crazy dramatic. No, it's, not, it's, it's nothing crazy dramatic. It's just, it, it's, it, they're just really nice. You know, sometimes, sometimes you look for area rugs and my God, it looks like everything came out out of Raymore and Flanagan and that's fine. But I don't want to have a maroon area rug with a gray feather slash across it you know like I want something more you know unique right 
And the prices weren't terrible. I'm not in the market for area rugs, but if I was, and they had my favorite, they had a doormat, which ha- which was just her eyeglasses. Like it was like a brown doormat that I saw and it was just the big black glasses. By the way, someone said, one of the comedians said to me the other night, they're like, Lise, you do this podcast by yourself every week. What do you talk about? Like you talk about serious stuff. I'm like, no, sometimes. They said, sometimes we talk about serious stuff like money and family and some health stuff sometimes. I said, well, what? I said, why the hell am I going to talk about that serious stuff? What am I, an expert? I'm not an expert on that kind of stuff. I, I mean, maybe money in some regard, maybe in business and tech some regard, but I'm not, this is, this is a chat. This is a girlfriend chat. I said, this is, this is, we're just, you're just seeing the world's view. My world's view, I should say. You're just listening to the world, listening to my worldview, listening to the world from my point of view. Who the hell am I? I'm a New York Italian mother. I'm a comedian. I had a lot of time in corporate America. That's what this podcast is about. They all these, all these podcasts, all these podcasts are out. They're great. Some of them are great and hilarious. They make me laugh. Some of them are serious. If I really want to find like a serious topic and I'll look it up. But like, but half of them, people are interviewing people. They have no content curation. Who the fuck gives a shit about half these people they are interviewing? Not me. And I don't mean it in a rude way. I just mean like, I don't care. I I don't care. You know, curation is everything. You know, curation is so important. I learned that in media, you know, back working in media, digital media. I was at Condé Nast for a stint. What a horror that was. It was exactly like, whatchamacallit? What's the movie? Come on. Shit. You know what I'm talking about. Devil Wears Prada. It was exactly like, I lasted six months. I was in, I was out. That's all I'm going to say. One day I'll tell you the story. But I am... I learned all that curation is everything. Every, people got these potpourri podcasts and potpourris. I like two comedians talking. That 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 that's great. I mean that that's hilarious. I like when a, someone has a podcast and they have another com a comedian as a guest. I love you know that's because it's you know it's great. It's great. It's just like it's it's two of the same kinds of people talking about their different points of view, making everybody laugh, making each other laugh. Like there's nothing better than that to me, right? But a solo cast. It's just my my point of view, right? I'm not going to have guests and be interviewing people about it, t- plugging their shit. Who the fuck? Who, who effing cares? Who effing cares? You don't care. When you listen, I bet, when you listen to this show, Crazy Effing Mommy, I bet that you're listening to it because it's just like talking to a girlfriend but not having to talk back. <laughs> and it's just, you're like escaping from from the 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 the, the, the dreck I think that's like a, a Hebrew word, a Yiddish word. The dra- you're escaping, escaping from the bills and the yelling and the nonsense and the husbands and the divorces and the demands. You just we're just sitting down, having coffee or a seltz. You're driving. A, we're just having a good. You know, that's it. That's it. That's it. Anyway, oh, product. I ordered some mango pop bodysuits on Amazon. I don't know how they're going to be. I'm hoping they're going to be fabulous. I Okay, Mango Pop is some brand on Amazon. If you type in like long sleeve bodysuit, they come up all over Amazon. And uh, they have so many reviews, thousands of reviews. I bought like, I, I fe- the thing is, is I cut the label out. So I don't remember. Like a year ago, I bought a bodysuit, a hot pink long sleeve bodysuit. And I think it was Mango Pop. And it's very nice, but I don't really wear it because it's, hot pink and it's a low cut neck and I have like a fashion thing like it's like it's like OCD like if I show my leg I don't show my chest you know if I show my chest I don't really show my leg and and my look like you know I mean I say it's the I like the mini skirt with the with the covered up neck that's my look right I don't really just like to show both I don't know I I don't know why I just might think and uh so so this is hot pink with the low neck and it's like I don't, I don't really wear it that much because it's, I would wear it with a pair of jeans or a nice pair of pants and like a heel. I'm like, where the hell am I going in heels? I'm going on stage in heels. Why? So I could look like, like, like a, I'm on stilts up there. That's not comfortable. Part of a comedian's job is to make the room and the audience feel comfortable, feel welcome. You don't want to walk. I don't want to parade around in Manolo Blahniks for you. And you don't want to see that either. 
So I don't really wear this bodysuit, but I cut the tag out because it was itching me. And I think it was that it was itching me. That's what I remember. But it also could be that whatever size I bought it in annoyed me. So I had to cut it out. I do that sometimes. I'm like, oh, it's an extra large. <laughs> Off with their heads. You know, that's, that's how I roll. Anyway. So, but I can't remember if it's mango pop and I haven't had the time to go back in my Amazon orders and do all that kind of recon. So I just ordered a couple. One of them is a turtleneck bodysuit with a half zip. It's a black turtleneck bodysuit with a, a thin half zip. Okay. And I like it all zippered up to the top, but it's a, it's a different take on the turtleneck. I, I hope it's great. I think I paid $20 for it. Check it out. Mango pop bodysuits on Amazon. The cotton, you know, the cotton from this one, the, the pink ones, you know, it's, it's fine. It's like a stretch cotton. It's not bad. Quote of the day. Mindy Calling. Oh my God. She was so funny on the office, right? It, it, this is a girl I would love to be friends with. You know why? Listen to this quote. There is no sunrise so beautiful that is worth me waking up to see it. <laughs> That's the kind of girl I am. I love that. People are like, oh, wake up. There's a blood moon. The other day in New York, I got a text from the group, the mothers, my kids' friends' mothers. Quick story before we wrap. Kids' friends' mothers text. Oh, there's going to be a beautiful blood moon, in, blood moon in New York. And she sends the chart of when you could see it. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 It's like It was like done at 5.30. I'm sorry. Did, did you think I was going to wake up and see a blood moon at three o'clock in the morning? Like, I, I, I'm all about beautiful moons. I'm all about getting a view, seeing a view, get doing an experience, a once in a lifetime thing. There's, apparently, there's not going to be one of these moons for another, like, I don't know, a couple decades. I'm all about it. But you want me to wake up <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning to see the moon? When I could see the moon anytime. I could see the moon at three o'clock in the afternoon in New York City. If I want to see a red moon, I'll just put a pair of red lenses on. Okay. <laughs> Mindy Callen, we'd be friends. I'm not waking up to see the sunrise these days. Sorry, my sleep too precious. I'm Elise Delucci. This is Crazy Effing Mommy 122. Thanks for listening. Love to love you, baby. <laughs>